So I am 39 weeks tomorrow. We will be induced on Monday the 8th. I'm so excited. I can't wait for the intended fathers to meet their baby and not be pregnant anymore. I just wanted to give you the quick version of how a surrogacy journey works from the beginning to the end. So at the very beginning, you'll have to go through the medical and psychological screenings as well as the exciting part, which is like the matching phase. So that's when you'll review um, profiles of other intended parents and see who's the best match for you. So you need to be medically cleared and then you'll sign your legal documents as well and then you're officially on your journey. You'll have to attend physical checkups and as well as your embryo transfer and then you get to give the biggest gift you could ever give somebody which is the gift of life. Only three days until our induction and I haven't done my hospital bag so I'm just, it's already capped. But I'm going to pull everything out to show you what's in here. So this is for a surrogacy, not for new baby home. So just myself, some like mini hairbrush. Um, and then if my breast pump comes in, I'll have that for the hospital. And then I have the mom cozy for home. And if the breast pump doesn't come in, I'll just have to use the medulla that they have at the hospital. But yeah, we have three days. And I'm getting a little nervous, but really excited at the same time, so... Okay, so I just packed up and delivered my first breast milk box and I'm like so nervous. I don't know. It wasn't like a full hundred ounces yet, but the fathers wanted me to send it, send it to them um, so they can start the baby on the breast milk. Um, I think it's like a little under 80, but we I just shoved it um, all with newspaper. I've seen people do that if it's not full and I threw in some ice packs um I think it oh, will go well I'm just like so nervous like what if it doesn't get there on time or it doesn't stay frozen enough because it's my first time doing it but it is in the milk stork box so I, I probably shouldn't worry but it's just like the first time I'm doing it so I'm nervous and I'm gonna be thinking about it until I get it and I just hope it it goes okay I'm currently nine months pregnant and I can't give birth. My intentions are never to scare people. This is just my story. I have a fibroid, which is exactly the same size as the baby sitting across my cervix. So the baby can't get through there at all. Like it's out of the question. And when it comes to a cesarean, I have a placenta on the front. If you know anything about placentas, the placenta can't be born before the baby, which is dangerous to the baby. And if they cut near the fibroid, then I, the risk of me bleeding like so high anyway, so you know, I could just bleed to death. That's basically what I'm up against. Every single doctor I've seen has said to me, did you have problem getting pregnant? And I didn't, it happened first time. They also told me, did I have any information before I become pregnant? I did, but not a lot. So I did see a specialist and I just didn't realize the severity of the positioning of this fibroid. It's in a really dangerous position for me. Why would I risk my life? Trust me, I know exactly what I'm putting my family through right now and I feel so bad. I'm just praying to God that I'm in safe hands and I get to see my baby and watch it grow up feeling of dying is just getting worse as my c-section is drawing closer i'm really really struggling so the baby stuff started to arrive today and although that's so exciting the reality of what's going to happen in my c-section and is giving me nightmares at night and i am struggling to hold it together i know the baby is going to be fine and that makes me so happy but the fact that i might never see the baby is really hard to digest the reason why I'm having a c-section is I can't have this baby naturally because the fibroid is so large and it covers my cervix. It must be horrible to go through that experience and live through all those nightmares that this woman um, described as having. She's literally living in fear just because and down to that she's pregnant and she's living in fear because she's going to be having a baby effectively because you know if she never got pregnant and she never chose to go ahead with this baby then she wouldn't then be suffering mentally and physically through this fibroid that's literally humongous. <laughs>
yeah, really, really big. I mean, covers uh, across the stomach, I think it was, and yeah, I think it said the same size as the baby as well, so it's massive, which means you can't give birth naturally because the baby won't fit through where the baby needs to go, unfortunately, so yeah, the only other option for her is uh, having a C-section, and that's never nice, you know, it's, it's an operation that some people uh, are fearful for, it's, a, it's an operation that um, some people don't want to have and I guess it's also an operation that is necessary for this woman. You know, it's necessary to, to be able to have this baby and to not only ensure that the baby is happy and healthy but also to ensure that we preserve the mum's health um, as well um, because you know, the last thing we want is for the operation to go wrong and then the whole family gets upset from uh, unforeseen circumstances. So, yeah, uh, all being well, this operation does go um, smoothly for, for this woman. And, uh, yeah, I hope to see her on the other side. So a natural birth is just out of the question. The C-section is incredibly dangerous anyway on its own but they can't cut down here because there is a fibroid there and then i have the placenta literally here so where they would cut then in a different scenario um they can't do that for me because the placenta is there so i won't know where they're going to cut until i've had the c-section i don't think so they're just going to find a space somewhere on my stomach to cut which is really scary if they nip my fibroid i can just bleed out just received a phone call from the hospital and I have my C-section day. It's in two days time. <sighs> I'm so nervous. Obviously it's a very high risk surgery for me with fibroids. Thank you so much for your support. And I just wanted to come and tell you guys that the C-section is now booked and we will have a baby this week and hopefully make it to the other side. I can't believe I'm saying this, I am alive. I made it through my C-section. I hardly bled at all. And I'm gonna tell you everything. I just am trying to get it all together. But this is the morning of my C-section. I was so nervous. I didn't know if I was gonna survive the next few hours of my life. But you know what? I'm here. I have a beautiful baby girl. My mum has kept me going this whole time. This is us walking into theater and here is the moment she was born and i had to share this with you because you have all been there every single step of the way helping me you have no idea her name is megan roxy after my mum, and i can't wait to continue showing you the rest of our journey together thank you i love you all oh i'm glad that uh, she, she managed to uh, finally have her baby daughter in the end and come through uh, and make it to the other side, you know, make it past that line. And she's basically seen the light and she's made it through her operation. You know, touch wood, nothing went wrong with it. I don't think it did. She said that she hardly bled at all, which is really, really positive because she was fearful of possibly bleeding to, to um, nothing. And uh, obviously she didn't do that, thankfully. Even though she was really, really worried initially, she's uh, been able to, to gather up all that strength and all that courage to fight through to the end. And on that other side that she's travelled to, she's, um, well, she's the happiest person you could ever be. Thanks for watching Storytender. Don't forget to like and follow.